All right, welcome everyone. My name is K. Michael Russell. I'm a comic book colorist and digital artist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So the video today, this is going to be the first in a new series that I am going to call Color Overs, I think. <laughs> so uh, I know some of my other favorite YouTubers have uh, these uh, series where they, you know, paint over or draw over different things. So I'm like, you know, we'll do a color over. I don't know if that's been done yet. So we're gonna, if it has, then I've stolen someone's idea. Sorry. So, uh, all right. So this is from Olivia. She's actually a student in my course and uh, posted this for feedback. And I, and I asked if we could use this in one of these videos. She said, sure. So um, we're going to start with this one. First, we're going to kind of talk about some things we can do better and then we'll actually get in here and, and make some some changes so uh, to start off with I want to talk about the the lighting uh, and primarily on we'll just focus on the front character just for the sake of time today and this is a, a very common problem I think I've even discussed this in other in other videos where when you're deciding to light something, okay, a lot of beginners tend to think very flat. They tend to think everything is either up or down or it's left or it's right. But that's not the only dimension. Okay, that's that's two dimensions. Okay. If the light is to my left in the same plane, it's here. If it's to the right, it's here, you know, up and down. But you also have what if it's in the front? What if it's behind me? You know? So when you're lighting something, it's not just a simple decision of do I light along this edge of one thing or do I light along the bottom edge of another. You know, that's we have to decide where the object that we're lighting is in relation to the light source in all three dimensions. Okay. And so in this case, and let me get a big bright color that you guys can see like that. And let's just kind of analyze this for a second. So, when we look at the uh, the skin, let's just focus on the skin on this thing for now. So we've got this light here, kind of along this edge. Okay, so in order for that to happen, and this kind of goes down along here, we would have to have a light, and I'm going to do the light as like a cone, basically. We'd have to have a light that's kind of pointing this way and like here's the tail of this arrow so uh, and because it's not hitting the front if it was hitting the front you know it would be pointed more you know in this direction where we can see the bottom of the cone so this this light is sort of behind the main character and to the left and let's switch colors a little bit we have this yellow underneath the eyebrow underneath the cheek underneath the pectoral muscles here in order for that to happen you know the light would have to be I mean it's almost impossible really but the light would have to be at a very strong angle you know about like this in order to hit all of those areas like that um, it's even under the it's under the, the the neck here it's all it's over here so the lighting is is a little inconsistent in, in where it's coming from and and it looks like just guessing how the what the thought process was here it looks like in all of those cases they they weren't thinking in terms of is it behind this zombie or is it in front of it they were just thinking well was it you know from the left or was it from the bottom or was it from the top or whatever that is and that's not really going to get you a very realistic looking lighting not that realistic is always what we're going for but um, you typically don't want it to be wrong, um, you know, and it doesn't always have to be perfect, but it can't be obviously incorrect, okay? And so in this case, the first thing we want to do is figure out the actual lighting because, and, and this is how I think about lighting, and I know I've talked about this in other videos, but if I'm going to light this let's just say the, the most obvious thing would be to light this zombie from the front okay so we've got a light source that is coming from the left maybe a little bit from the top but if you're looking at an arrow it's in between us and the zombie okay and it's pointing toward the zombie now the way I look at this is if I if my eyeball is this light if I'm looking through that light like it's a camera 
what all am I going to see from where this light source is? So if if we went in here and let's set up one of those big fancy uh, Hollywood style lights on a boom or something, and but it's out in front and it's pointing at this zombie guy, what am I going to see? You know, from that particular angle. Okay, so I'm going to see. I'm going to see the front of the forehead. You know, I'm going to see the cheeks. I'm going to see this. I'm going to see all this here. Okay, that's all going to be pretty much facing me. Okay, so that whole front side is going to be catching that light instead of, you know, just the edge. Same thing on these arms. You know, am I really just going to see this edge? Because in order for me to just catch that edge, I would have to be like way back here, you know, pointed at an angle from behind. Okay. Uh, I would actually, you know, I would see a good bit of the front of this. I would see a good bit here. You know, again, this shape here doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay. So, because if I'm standing in front with my light, you know, all of this is going to be that color, or at least going to be some of the brightest areas. And maybe a little bit going way down this arm. So, Whenever you go to light something, whether it's a, a, a person or a car or a shape or whatever it is, always ask yourself, you know, if I'm the light source, what am I going to see? And it'll teach you to think in three dimensions instead of just two, because unfortunately we can only work in two dimensions here. Um, we're not we're not in a 3D. This isn't a Blender tutorial. Some of you guys are like, well, actually, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. This is Photoshop, so we're not doing 3D. And uh, so, so yeah, so we, we talked about that, and I talked about that with Olivia, and she made a, a second attempt here. And I think this one's a lot better. Um, still, it's not without issues, but um, she kind of changed the lighting a little bit. This, this yellow now comes a little bit further across. You know, we've still got some uh, kind of uh, some strange angles on some of this, but it's still a dramatic improvement from where it was. And uh, we've also got we've got more light up here. Uh, we've got the shadows throwing over this arm, which I think actually looks a little bit better than, than what it did before. Um, it's also a good bit darker. That's a whole other conversation for another day. But but yeah, I think I do think overall it's it's a much much better take on it. So and and while we're we're here, uh, something else we can do. So if I wanted to actually kind of paint over this, I'm going to get just very lightly and throw in some some more of this yellow in some of these places tone some of that down in here and strange strange anatomy where this nose is but that's fine it, it's a cartoony zombie anyway but uh, now I can uh, tone down some of this yellow down here if I want just to if I don't want that effect to be quite as strong and I'm just roughing this in quickly for the sake of time basically so um, but anyway, we got a little more light there, and uh, the other thing that I did was play around a little bit with the background, um, because everything here is fairly warm, pretty much the whole thing is red and orange, which is not a problem, I don't really have a, necessarily an issue with that, but you could also consider playing around with some different colors, you know, if the red's the only red thing on the page, then it's going to draw more focus, it's going to draw more attention. So by shifting around some of the background colors and shifting around the sky color, you can kind of help draw attention to some of those other areas in the piece. But All right, so uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to check the subscribe button. If you want to see more of these, there's a link in the description with uh, links on my coloring courses. If you want more step-by-step -step sort of organized how do I do this type tutorials, then be sure to check those out. And thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Take care.